I work in healthcare and I like to donate blood, so my mom told me this one strange story. There were these two sisters somewhere up in the Twin Cities. They were both college students and they donated blood to the Red Cross. One sister got very sick and she lost a lot of weight and got thinner and thinner, wasting away. The doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with her either. One night, her mom had a dream. In the dream, her dad, who passed away recently or several years ago, came to her mom and said, I don't know why you don't look over our daughters very well. You need to tell them to stop donating blood. The reason why our daughter is so sick is because she signed the paperwork before donating, and now the donor who received her blood is dead. Even in the afterlife, Nancy, the deceased, keeps coming back and taking our daughter's blood. That's why she's sick all the time. After that, the mom asked the daughters if they were donating blood. When they confirmed that this was true, the family had to do a jingle bell. Now the daughter is healthy again. I don't think I'll be donating blood anymore. This is a story I heard that happened in my hometown. There was a family that lived in a haunted house. The water would turn on by itself. They would then hear footsteps and strange noises. One day, everybody was out except for a teenager. He was making noodles when he heard the bathroom faucet turn on. Now, in this house, the kitchen is at one end and the bathroom is at the end of the hallway. He goes to check it out, finds that the water is running in the bathroom, and turns it off. Then, the boy comes back and continues to make his noodles. He heard the faucet turning on a second time, so he goes back and turns it off. He returns back to the kitchen and stirs his noodles in the pot. The third time, he heard it turning on. Instead of walking down the hallway, he peeps out of the kitchen, and when he does, he sees a female forehead peeping out from the bathroom, as if she's also looking at him. Creepy thing was that he didn't see the entire face, just the forehead and the hair dangling around it. I think the family moved out soon after. Interested in sharing your stories? Submit them to momchronicles at gmail.com or in the description below. Here is the next story. Thank you. Back when my family and I used to live in a duplex in the middle of a wooded forest right off of exit 107 on I-40. If you're in North Carolina, you know where this is. We had a relative that came over and stayed with us for a while. Everything was fine at first. There were a lot of us kids at the time, and we were always having too much fun to pay attention to anything else but ourselves until after one night. Everybody had just gotten finished taking baths right after dinner, and it was bedtime. My aunt and her family had been sleeping out in our living room since their arrival. Well, that night, it will be a night that she will always remember. She said that no more than five minutes after the last light was turned off, it turned back on, and then off again. It would proceed to turn on and off. My aunt thought that it was probably either me or one of my brothers and sisters, so she yelled at us for us to stop playing around and to go to sleep. It stopped for a while, and then it happened again. On and off, that light would flicker by itself. My uncle kind of got mad, so he told my aunt to walk over to the hallway and see who it was. She got up and walked over towards the hallway, but stopped and slowed down in her track when she heard tiny little voices giggling from the hallway. She said that she was going to scream at us if she sees that it's one of us, but when she slowly peeked from the end corner, she saw two little hairy creatures looking like little kids, and they were talking to each other. One of them was on top of the other, 
so they could reach the light switch because they were short and they were flicking the switch on and off, on and off. She got freaked out and ran back to my uncle and their kids but was too scared to even say a single word. My uncle, thinking that it was maybe one of us still, got really mad and got up himself and walked over to the hallway. But by now, the things were gone. So, he came into my brothers and I's room and kind of yelled at us to stop playing around and for us to go to sleep. We didn't know what he was talking about until the next day, when my aunt told us kids to be more careful when we play. She told us about what happened from the night before. I was confused and thought that it wasn't true because the switch was right out of my brothers and I's room. All of us kids used to take baths with the bathroom door wide open for a while after that incident. More strange things happened at that spooky place, but I'll share more later. When I was in college, word spread around that there was going to be a shaman that would come and teach the monk students more about the religion in practice. I was excited. When I attended, it was a big speaker room and he had a mic. He was talking about spirits and how shamans would ward them off. He was also showing us examples of monk funeral shaman singing, I think they were called Zisai. However, sitting down, something didn't feel right. The room was half full, but I felt like it was full. Throughout the event, the shaman never ever turned and looked to his right. After the event, I went to hang out with my friends. I saw my friend that also went to the event, and that friend can see spirits. I briefly mentioned to him that it was kind of weird how the shaman never looked to his right. My friend replied, At the event, there were a lot of ghosts that were sitting around and standing, listening as well. To the right of the shaman was this little girl that kept on trying to get his attention. I heard this story from my relative. She's currently in her 60s and she's a shaman. Let's call her Yur. Yur grew up in Laos before the war. When Yur was 14, people said that she was the best Gutia singer in her village. All the boys chased her, and a lot of girls were jealous of her talent. One day, she had her heart broken by a boy and went to cry in the forest alone. She started to sing Gutia to relieve her sadness. All of a sudden, a huge gust of wind came thundering behind her and cut a bamboo tree down near her. Yur got so scared and she ran home. The next day, she was sick and her family had called in a shaman to see what was wrong. The shaman said that when Yur was sad and sung Gutsia, the god of wind heard her beautiful singing and said, if you're not happy, come marry me and you'll become happy. The shaman did a ritual for her and also changed her name. Ever since then, her talent of Gutsia was taken away so that the god of wind could not recognize her and find her anymore. This past year, I started interviewing people at my workplace. We hired a lady and started her training with us. The first day of training was us getting to know each other better. She told me a story of her past. For privacy reasons, her name will be Alice. When Alice was younger, she used to get bullied a lot. There was this mean kid who would call her names and pick on her every day. One day, when Alice was waiting for her parents to pick her up from school, she saw her bully also waiting for his mom to pick him up too. She was so fed up with them that she yelled out loud, I hope your mom dies in a car accident. Moments later, a car accident occurred right near the school. All the students who were waiting for their parents also rushed to see who it was. It was the bully's mom lying dead in her car. However, when Alice approached the car, she noticed something. The mother's eyes were looking straight at her. Alice freaked out and left the area. Ever since that incident, Alice told me that she's been scared to death by the dark and she sees the mother standing in the dark. 
She gets slept on every night if she sleeps with the lights off. She carries a flashlight with her when it's nighttime because she senses the mother is near trying to get to her. Alice even covered her whole car interior with LED lights to prevent the mother from getting to her in the car when driving during the night. Due to this, Alice is so stressed. She takes pills to keep her sanity normal and to fall asleep. She told me this, Every time I look into the dark, I could just see those eyes I saw when the car accident happened. She's always there in the dark, and she is very angry at me. When Alice told me all of this, I couldn't even train her anymore because I was so scared. I recommended her to see a shaman, but she told me she doesn't believe in shamanism, so I don't really know how to help her. My niece is currently 27 years old and has a little girl ghost attached to her. Apparently, that little girl attached herself to one of my sister-in-laws first. That sister-in-law went over to my oldest brother's house and the girl ghost decided that she wanted my niece instead. That night, the girl sat on my niece trying to choke her. My niece couldn't sleep at all that night. She kept on going from her room to the living room. When dawn approached, she felt bad for my sister-in-law who spent the night there. She decided to ignore the ghost and went to sleep. That didn't work. The spirit of that girl taunted my niece all night. My niece talked to one of her brothers who was also sensitive to that stuff. She discussed what had been happening to her and about the girl that is haunting her. I guess after much talking, she decided to meditate and find out what the girl wanted. Apparently, the little girl ghost lost her mom or something. She liked how my niece was and decided that she wanted my niece. During the meditation, the girl told my niece that if she was ever to have a child, the girl wanted to be that child. The spirit of the little girl is always around my niece. If the spirit is displeased, she'll let my niece know. If the little girl doesn't like anyone in my niece's room, she'll make that person uncomfortable. She even makes babies uncomfortable. One of her brother's wives had an infant. Every time that infant went into the room, it would just cry and cry. Once it's out of the room, it would stop. Speaking of babies, for some reason, babies look at my mom. They look at her for a couple of minutes and then all of a sudden, they just cry hysterically like they're sad or something. I don't know, but anytime a child comes near my mom, they just don't like her. They cry and want to leave as soon as possible. My uncle made a joke about how if babies cry when they see you, it means you're ugly. So that probably explains why every time when babies look at me, they just cry instead. <laughs> 